I'm a political journalist, but I spend very little of my time here in the supposed crucible of British politics. The journalists who spend almost all their time here are the lobby, an elite group who attend briefings with the Prime Minister's most trusted aides. The lobby forms part of the Parliamentary Press Gallery, which according to its own website is the place where political narratives are formed and where the collective consensus of the political media is established. But a lot of questions hang over the lobby and what it does. Is this kind of reporting really the best way of documenting our increasingly tumultuous politics? In terms of politics relationship with the public, might a world of unattributed quotes, official briefings and insider access be part of the problem? And now more than ever, are there things that are much more worthy of attention than the lines spun by government and opposition and the soap opera of who's up and who's down? Chris Hope is the Telegraph's senior political correspondent and a lobby old hand. Hello. Christopher, tell me what a lobby journalist does that sets you apart from other journalists. I think nothing sets us apart from the journalists at all, John. I think we're basically the same as other journalists. What we do is we have an office in the press gallery and we get to go to meetings with a, a, a lobby pass, gets you to walk around the place unencumbered, and you can go to a meeting twice a day at 11 o'clock normally and 3.45, at which you can ask anything you like at all of the Prime Minister's spokesman. Do you try and get out at least occasionally? Today I was in Hastings asking the Prime Minister a question in Hastings and meeting people, but of course we dashed back. Did you to talk file. to the public in Hastings? I didn't talk to the public in Hastings. His recent scoops include forcing an admission out of the PM at the height of the phone hacking affair that he'd ridden Rebecca Brooks' retired police horse. And that was an example of lobby working, I would argue, because basically you're turning up. Your, my, my agenda is not their agenda, it's my agenda to ask about the police force, not the government's. And eventually we wheedle out a small amount of information which came to, to personify the whole phone hacking affair. At the same time though, I wonder whether that's also an example of the lobby having such a sort of inward Westminster sort of gossipy focus that if you're not careful, you lose sight of this great political tumult which is happening out in the country. I'm really aware of how often unimportant things that we get excited about can appear, but I'm trying to basically, trying to sort of channel, my, my, for me, the views of t Telegraph readers and try and put those questions to the Prime Minister's spokesman. <laughs> it's another crazy day in Westminster. Politician talks out of turn, everyone goes bananas. And in the outside world, you'd be forgiven for thinking that's what British politics is. The big stories in British politics increasingly seem to be happening way beyond Westminster. Great result. And developments like the rise of UKIP and the remaking of Scottish politics only seem to highlight the gap between political life as seen from the lobby and what's happening in the rest of the UK. The journalist Peter Oborn has a keen sense of the way that most Westminster-focused journalism is failing to keep up. He completely failed to notice, for instance, lobby journalism and the rise of UKIP. Because UKIP emerged from outside the political class. It completely failed to take account of voter discontent about immigration. That wouldn't interest the lobby. It missed the fact that 45% of voters in Scotland end, ended up voting for independence, the, the yeah. stirrings of that. And missed, when it missed the ahead. early SNP story, completely failed to note that George Galloway was going to walk home in Bradford. That came as a total surprise. And why is that? Well, it's, not interest, it, it's only interested in, to, in the manoeuvrings at uh, Westminster. Is that its fault, though? I think you can say that it is negligent. And whether or not knives are out for Ed Balls, Which and are. whether or not Theresa May fancies their chances as being the Tory leader. Which she does. They're interesting stories, yeah. but my feeling very often is they crowd out stories as important as the fact that there's a housing crisis. Well, five million people don't earn a living wage. The fact that there are now millions of people unable to get a roof of their own over their heads. They're all absolutely important, and yes, they're more important than Theresa May's ambitions or whether knives are out, out for Red Bulls. You're quite right. But do you hear but, them being talked but, about? But do you hear them being but, talked about among you and your lobby colleagues? That's the question. I often write about people not paying tax. Lance Price spent his working life as a lobby journalist, only to then join Tony Blair's government as a spin doctor. He now looks at Westminster with a little more critical distance. 
go to the UKIP voter and tell them you're from the media, which I do quite often, and they think you're as much part of the problem as politicians. Yeah, and they're probably that right. That tells you something about the state of political journalism. They're probably right. They're probably so what should, right. So what should your average lobby hack do then? In well, they should probably get out more for a start. And, and it's always been the case that lobby hacks should get out more. Um, and uh, and you know, general election campaigns is a sort of an opportunity to do that, in that you might go out on the bus or you might sort of go at least into some constituencies and see what's going on in, 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 the, in the real world. Um, you know, it remains the case that the lobby is not part of the real world. And the whole kind of relationship, the discussions that go on within that environment are disconnected from the real world. The kind of journalist who uh, almost obsessively cultivates politicians and has all these lunches with them and knows that, you know, the, knows of the names of all the special advisors and is able to get briefing about X or Y speech in advance is a very cherished thing. I wonder whether, and I would like to see newspapers which felt more confident about um, setting their own agenda and being closer to their readers rather than the politicians. For people who are critical of the lobby, there's certainly one way things could be improved. Perhaps Westminster journalists just need to get out more.